Welcome back to the Psy Fireplace. We're going through one of three of these big banker boxes full of science fiction and a little bit of fantasy books that I have picked up recently. This is in accordance with my book buying hiatus, which I will explain as I go. Check this out. First of all, check out that cover. Second of all, check out the updated autofocus on this camera. This is one of my all time favorites, Mode in God's Eye. A Little bit of sun fading on the spine there, but that's a very rare cover. You don't see it all that much. There is some suspicious activity going on between this man and that very satisfied looking alien. Until I read 100 books out of the books that I already have, I'm not allowing myself to buy any more unless they are for sale or a couple other contingencies. So everything that you're seeing is gonna go up for sale on a whatnot auction. That's gonna be Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific and there will be a link in the description. And this is all, I'm not just being a salesman or whatever, this is all like the really excellent A tier. Like 90% of it is stuff that will hurt me to sell like this. To your scattered bodies go by Philip Jose Farmer. I have the omnibus of the first two Riverworld novels. This looks way cooler. This vintage paperback. I got most of the ones in this box from a uh, used bookstore locally. So I paid a little bit more than I usually pay for used books, but they're so good that I could easily justify doing it. Here's a paperback of The Dragon and the George by Gordon Dixon. This is a very celebrated older fantasy series. You don't find Dragon and the George all that much. I do find the um, sequels to it quite a bit. This one is really, really gonna hurt to sell. This is a vintage copy of The Inverted World by Christopher Priest with an amazing cover and really nice condition on this too. I do have a copy of this, but it's not vintage. So the deal is if I keep a book for myself, it either has to be a gift from someone or if I do keep a book, I have to pay additional an additional 20 bucks on top of whatever I paid for it that will go towards a pool of money that I will use to buy books to give away to you at the end of the 100 book challenge. I may end up dropping a 20 on that. Probably not. I've been pretty diligent. I've been pretty disciplined about not uh, not doing that. This is really testing my boundaries too. Best of Cordwainer Smith. And this has the game of Rat and Dragon in it, which is his most celebrated uh, story and something I really want to read. I may do a cheeky little sneak on that story before I sell it. That might break the rules a little bit. I may end up just keeping this because that's a pretty rare book. This is another one I am tempted just to spend 20 bucks to keep. Poseidonis by Clark Ashton Smith. And this is considered not actually one of the better collections of his stories, um, but it is Clark Ashton Smith. He was one of the um, forebears of weird fiction. He was contemporary with H.P. Lovecraft and everybody says that he's Lovecraft's literary superior. I've never read him. I am very, very curious to read him. And the cover is great. Where Late the Sweet Birds Sang by Kate Wilhelm. This is one I have heard described as a really great book. I do have about 400 really great and really unread books though. Vintage copy of Waystation by Simak. This and City are considered his classics. City is one of my most beloved books that I've ever read. And it is going in the new top 15. A little bit of a spoiler, that video will be coming soon. Here's the movie tie-in edition of Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. This is the same, uh, not the same literal copy, but I had a copy like this when I was a teenager. That was uh, how I read it. Cities in Flight by James Blish. James Blish, I would put pretty firmly in my top five favorite authors ever. And this is probably what he's best known for along with those Star Trek tie-in novels that he wrote. Um, need to read it, but I do have a copy. This is really cool. The Language of the Night by Ursula Le Guin. This is essays on genre fiction. 
And this is fairly rare. I've never seen this. I've never heard this talked about. This is an omnibus of, what is it, three? Yeah, three Edgar Rice Burroughs books about journeying to the center of the earth, possibly to capitalize on the success of Jules Verne's book. I don't know the history, really. A hard cover of The Hunger by Whitley Stryber. The Road to Corlay by Richard Cowper. I think is a dystopian novel set in pastoral... somewhere in the UK, I think. The David Lynch movie tie-in edition of The First Dune. We have the cast and crew on the back. A beautiful copy of Time Machine and War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. I've said it many times in other videos, but if you've not read these, please give them a chance. They are superior to really the majority of even more modern science fiction books that I have read. Beautiful cover on this vintage Jack Vance, The Gray Prince. One that will hurt to let go of. But let go of it, I shall. Nebula Award Stories, the first one. With some real greats in here. Brian Aldiss, Roger Zelazny, Harlan Ellison, J.G. Ballard, Gordon Dixon, Larry Niven. Cobra Strike by Timothy Zahn. Probably not an A-lister, but I did get it. Transition and Metaphase by Vonda McIntyre. People seem to really like McIntyre. A Deepness in the Sky by Werner Vinge. This and Fire Upon the Deep are, I think, his two masterpieces. I have now read the majority of his major works in science fiction, and uh, this and uh, Fire Upon the Deep are truly superior. Another vintage, Christopher Priest and Doctrinaire. Check this out. Vallis, Philip K. Dick. Very rare to find Dick in the wild. He gets snatched up right away because he's one of those big marquee science fiction authors everybody's heard of, and he has like cool guy cachet attached to him. The Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch. Clearly it is vintage. I have tried to look up this cover and it is not easily found. Jack Vance, The Dying Earth. One of the finest science fiction and or fantasy books I've ever read. City by Simak. And that wonderful, wonderful cover. This one, I think I am officially gonna keep and pay the 20 bucks because it's very, very rare. Final Circle of Paradise by the Strugatsky Brothers. And it has a pretty cool cover. And uh, you can't really get it for less than 20, 25 bucks anyway. So I might as well hang on to it. And uh, I have this and Roadside Picnic. You just never ever find Strugatsky books, even in bookstores, they're pretty rare, and especially this one. Uh, or I've, I've never seen it, never heard of it, and vintage Strugatsky I think is doubly rare. So I think this has to just be mine. Hellwalker, I think I got this one for free. It's a cool cyberpunk cover. Dream Master by Roger Zelazny, kick-ass cover. One of my favorites ever. I've done a video on this, or this has been in a video before, and um, I think it has some of the most beautiful prose in any science fiction book that I've read. Bob Shaw's Other Days, Other Eyes. I've been looking for this book for a while now, and I get to keep it because I bought a big raft of these books from this used bookstore, and uh, the woman at the register told me that I could just have this one for free. So this is a gift, so I get to keep it. And it's in the, the pan lozenge, as uh, Outlaw Bookseller calls them, this, this edition here. It is a little damaged, but um, Bob Shaw actually has had a long life on this channel, and I have never read him. I probably have six or seven of his books. I found a bunch of Shaws in a hall of... Uh, vintage paperbacks way early on when I was first putting vids, videos up on this channel. And um, they've always called to me and I've never gotten around to reading them. 
Oryx and Crake by Margaret Atwood. Please don't uh, crucify me for this, but I don't really care for Atwood that much. I read Handmaid's Tale and I thought it was not uh, very good. This is my all-time favorite fantasy book, The Eyes of the Overworld by Jack Vance. This is the sequel to The Dying Earth. Uh, the finest fantasy book I have ever read. And this is straight fantasy. It is technically science fantasy because it takes place in the world built in Dying Earth, but for all intents and purposes, it is just fantasy. Second copy of Three Stigmata, Time Out of Joint by Philip Dick. I actually have this same exact edition up on the side fireplace behind me. Same with this, Robert Silverberg's The Book of Skulls. I have this exact same edition. Samuel Delaney, The Towers of Toron. Not one that I've heard of before. I don't know if it's fantasy or, uh, no, that looks like science fantasy. Maybe there's some space stuff going on in the background. This one also is hard to pass up on, but I'm probably gonna put it up for sale. The best of Philip K. Dick, really cool cover. These are pretty hard to find. I've never run into one. John Wyndham's Stowaway to Mars, a Wyndham that I've never heard of. Pretty cool vintage copy. Same with this, John Wyndham's Rebirth, not familiar to me, uh, also not common. And A Canticle for Leibowitz. And I have another one of this exact same copy. So that'll do it for the first box. Like I said, I have two more boxes that are at least as good as this. It's a live auction. You just bid live, like being in a real auction. And again, there will be a link to that in the description. You may be saying, Matt, why would you subject yourself to this? Why would you get all these great books and then sell them? I have approximately 400 unread, just genre books, not even including literary fiction or nonfiction, just science fiction and fantasy. I have about 400 books that I have held on to because I want to read each and every one of them for some specific reason. So it is becoming gratuitous for me to just accumulate more and more books. So I'd rather do this and turn it into an income stream and still be able to get the thrill of the book hunt. And I think it'll be fun for people to be able to reap the rewards. I'm almost done with Eon by Greg Bear. And then I'll be moving on to more randomly picked books and I'm gonna keep going until I hit the 100 and then I'll be back in the driver's seat and back to spending dumb amounts of money on books.